Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Catalyst webinar series presented by the Southern California PGA Section Education Committee. The Catalyst webinar series is a bi-weekly platform for PGA members to gain valuable knowledge and education credits on a variety of different topics uh, relevant to our field. This morning, our Catalyst presenter, very proud to introduce Susan Roll, PGA, LPGA presenting on the Little Golf Center that could. Many of you know that Susan is the owner and operator of the Carlsbad Golf Center, which uh, the story of its success, um, its rise from 2003 to present day, and is, is uh, one of the best stories of a, of a small business operation um, made successful, and I think it's an inspiration to all of us, and that's why I reached out to Susan and asked her to uh, present, to, to tell her story of of uh, how the golf, uh, Carlsbad Golf S uh, Center came to be, and it's a wonderful story. Some, most of you, I mean, we all know who Susan Roll is, but just to give you a little introduction for those that are not as familiar with her as others, uh, Susan is a uh, PGA Class A professional. She's also a LPGA Life Member professional. As I mentioned a moment ago, she's the owner of the Carlsbad Golf Center. It has been since 2003. She is uh, a winner of many, many, many awards on the chapter section and national level. We don't have time actually to mention all of them, but the ones that are relevant for this morning's presentation. She was the Ping Golf Company National Club Fitter of the Year in 2011. She has been the Merchandiser of the Year for the PGA uh, San Diego chapter for 2009-2003. Uh, PGA National Merchandiser of the Year for the Public Courses in 2011. She's won the Section Merchandiser of the Year for uh, the Southern California Section for 2010, 2011, and 2004. And she's also been awarded the Golf Professional of the Year Award on many levels. Uh, PGA uh, San Diego Chapter 2010, uh, LPGA Teaching and Club Professionals National in 2005, uh, Western Section for the LPGA Teaching and Club Professionals for 2005, and she was also the uh, PGA um, Section Golf Professional of the Year for 2011. Good morning, Susan. Welcome to the Catalyst Webinar Series, and thank you for being here today. Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you, John. Uh, appreciate that introduction, and uh, just really glad to be here and share kind of a fun story with you today, and uh, hopefully we can spend a little time after with some questions if you have any, but... Uh, Going back uh, a few years, gosh, I can't believe it's been 14 years, but 2003, we had the opportunity, came, kind of fell in my lap for the opportunity to buy this, uh, this uh, golf center, and it was coming out of bankruptcy. The uh, owner had gotten it back after a, a bankruptcy of family golf centers, so we uh, went round and round for almost five months and uh, ended up being able to put the deal together, and uh, you know, my dream come true. I'd always wanted to have my own business uh, when I was younger, and I had no idea how I was going to get there, but was able to put together the financing and a business partner and uh, were able to purchase the uh, golf center in January 2003. Um, when I walked in uh, that first night, I'll never forget it because all the staff was sitting there and they had no idea what was going on and uh, just I remember walking in and uh, just telling them what was happening and telling them they all still had their jobs. We didn't change a single person out, you know, everything stayed the same. Uh, it was really important to me to never affect the people uh, the heart and soul of the business. So we uh, kept everyone on, and uh, the next step, though, that night was to go rip the discount sign off the, the wall because I knew as a small business we had to ha do things differently, and there was no way we could win the discount war, uh, just too small of a golf shop being about 3,000 square feet. So um, reset the whole uh, mission of the company, which was uh, much more focused on the customer service of the industry, and the, um, uh, the uh, expertise that the staff had. Um, the other big thing for me was the, it was you know, a very family friendly facility. Uh, we wanted uh, skill level, all skill levels. And um, one of my favorite things I always said was, if you had clothes on, you're welcome in our place. We really had no, no golf attitude, as I call it. Uh, we just wanted everybody to come out and have a good time. Um, you know, we have people that come in spending their last dollar in their bucket of balls, and we have people that flying in their jets to get custom fit. So we just wanted to make sure everybody felt welcome. And uh, the, uh, the big thing for me was to educate our team. 
Uh, we needed to make sure we were knowledgeable in all aspects of the game. Uh, club fitting and teaching and merchandising were where I felt we would be the strongest in my background, uh, heavily on the club fitting and teaching side of things and my uh, earlier parts of my career. So I really wanted to focus on that aspect. And I thought our facility was uniquely positioned since we had the driving range, we had space for a fitting center. And uh, so that's where I, I focused the last 14 years around developing that cu the custom fitting and club business. Um, the, uh, the staff, uh, you know, customer service is by far the thing we strive the most, uh, making sure that uh, CGC feels like their personal golf shop. Um, we strive to be the golf experts, so we spend a lot of time in training and making sure that everybody is very knowledgeable um, all the way through the staff. Either you, even on your first day there, we really spend a lot of time getting them accustomed to the merchandise and being able to talk uh, about all the merchandise. And um, if they don't know something, we make sure that there's somebody right there next to them to help them. Um, moving in a little bit into uh, what I just spoke about. Um, our values, you know, customer service, education, growing the game and community um, really are the pillars of this part of our, our business. Um, custom fit, uh, customer service, um, here's a little bit on that and I'll just speak a little bit about that. Um, one of the first things we wanted to be was the Nordstrom's <coughs> of golf and the Cheers of golf and uh, we, accom <coughs> excuse me. we accomplished that just by making sure that, you know, people can buy things, they're welcome to bring them back. We take pretty much everything back if they're not happy with it. Um, I'll get a little bit more into some of our guarantees, but uh, we just always wanted everybody to feel comfortable they were making a good purchase decision, whether it be based on price or that it was right for them. And uh, always striving to make sure that, uh, that we focused on the customer's needs um, and not on our sales goals. Um, very important to make sure that the customer walks out of there happy and feeling like we care more about them than the sale. So one of the things with the, the team support, um, we just sent, every year we send our team to the PGA Merchandise Show, several get to go every year. Um, and part of that is just making sure that we continue to educate and bring back the most, um, I guess, uh, current products that we want to sell. Every year we try to find the product that uh, we can get in our shop that we sell a ton of. And so last year we found the, the Stick It, uh, which goes on a range finder. And we sold probably well over a thousand of those tickets between our online shop and our in our shop pro shop and uh, stuff like that. So every year we want to make sure we stay current. We change out our merchandise all the time and uh, educate the staff on that to make sure that they're they're ready and capable to uh, support our customers. Susan, in yeah. terms of the uh, education, and you said you send the staff to uh, the PGA Merchandise Show every year. Um, that's a that that's required for your staff to go for the most part. Um, no, we don't ever make it a requirement, but usually they jump up and down and are excited to go. So uh, it's never been an issue of of uh, they they get to decide if they want to go or not. But most every time they say yes. Is that a, is that uh, something that CGC uh, expenses for them? Oh, oh, absolutely, yes. We pay for all education, PJ education, LPG education. Very important to me to uh, help help my team along in any way I can because one of the big things is we have a lot of uh, young golf professionals at our facility. We're a great spot to come in and get started in the golf business, and I just feel like that's a big thing that I can uh, help my team with is getting them educated and get them on the right track. Thank you, Susan. I know that's uh, uh, unfortunately you're probably in the minority with that practice, and it's a, it's it's a great practice, especially for a uh, an organization that does as much club fitting as you. Um, keeping the staff abreast with uh, uh, technology and innovations that are coming out all the time is probably immensely important. Thank you. You bet. And I will say too that you know our our reps for all the the golf brands, a uh, fantastic job in educating our staff. They come out and do uh, technology seminars for us. Um, you know, we do go to, we do all the um, education, the online education for all the companies as well, but they, they do come out and we do a special training for all our staff. So that also helps us to make sure everybody's understanding what uh, proper uh, club fitting has to do every year because it changes so much, especially with the launch monitors and a lot of the quick connect systems. We want to make sure everybody knows how to use them properly. So growing the game, um, near and dear to my heart, I've been involved in the section for many years on this uh, 
particular topic. And I think we all just have to do everything we can to make sure young people get a club in their hand. And so uh, one of the big things we do is the um, junior days. We have a, a free uh, junior uh, demo day, and we bring out uh, U.S. Kids and some of the other brands to uh, have the kids out there for lessons and prizes and treats. And, and we have clubs out there for the parents can see the kids hitting them and uh, making sure that we have the right clubs in the kids' hands because we find a lot of times through, it doesn't matter what age, that if we don't have the proper equipment in their hands, um, the chances of them not enjoying the game go way up. So if we can start them off right, we've got a good chance of success. And uh, we have all kinds of different programs for women. We do the same kind of thing. A lot of times we'll have women's special events. Um, we have LPGA instructors out there teaching them. Um, so that usually very popular. We'll get you know up to 20 people, uh, women in the uh, women's drop-in. Seniors, same thing. A lot of seniors come out for our senior drop-ins. Uh, another fun thing we love to do, and this is just us trying to be a great community partner, but we do the uh, blood drives, the toy uh, drives. Uh, we have uh, we do a lot of canned food drives and clothing drives. Um, you know, come in, donate a shirt, and we'll give them 50% off a new shirt, um, things like that, just to make sure we're doing everything we can to help the community. And then just wanted to go into uh, a little bit more about the really what I call the five pillars of our business, uh, to revenue, uh, the revenue drivers here. Um, obviously, I've mentioned before, the club fitting is huge for us. So um, you can see there's Matt there, and Monica doing some fitting. Um, but here's just a few things about the fitting. Um, and one of the big things, we have 10 brands that we fit, and sometimes we have more than that even. Uh, but the, the big thing there is we're not biased. We fit uh, based on the consumer's needs, uh, whatever the client uh, asks for. Uh, a lot of times they don't leave with what they thought they would, but we want to make sure that we provide them every opportunity to hit what they, they uh, deem to enjoy the most. And so we're just the facilitators of the process. Uh, but at the end, uh, you know, we help them make their final decisions. And uh, we offer a happiness guarantee. So if they've been fit by us, we have a 90-day guarantee and a low price match guarantee. So really, they have uh, no reason not to buy at that point because they can bring them back if they're not completely happy. Fortunately, we don't get very many sets back, so it's a, it never been a problem. And there's the fitting center off to the right there. Uh, we have the, a lot of quick connect systems, so you can see the shafts up there and uh, all the heads underneath. So we're able to quickly uh, get in there and switch out uh, to different clubs. You know, when you're going through that many different brands to fit, we have to be efficient with our time. One of the biggest challenges is uh, finishing a, if we have an ultimate fit, finishing it in two and a half hours. So uh, it's a very time-consuming process, and we, uh, we're really efficient with it at this point. But you can see our launch monitor down there in the lower uh, right, and uh, the um, Monica's right there. We have two fitting uh, uh, centers on one on either side of the building there that has the launch monitors and big screens on either side. just can't see it in the picture. Susan, how much do you uh, charge uh, for club fittings? If it's uh, if 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 the customer is not there to officially buy, they're kind of on the fence and just want to get reaffirmed with their specs. Uh, what's the, what's the going rate for a club fitting if it doesn't involve uh, direct sales? And also, if you could elaborate a little bit on um, how that's rolled into the cost of the equipment if they do purchase. Right. Uh, one second. Let me bring up. Uh... If I can bring up that, uh, let's see if I can find that here. There we go. Uh, so uh, fitting rates can vary. Um, we start anywhere from thirty dollars up to two hundred and seventy dollars. Um, we we do give a quite a drastic discount for off if they uh, choose to purchase. But uh, the way we treat it is more like a lesson. And uh, if they purchase from us, then we give them a discounted rate on the, the fitting price with purchase. Um, on our website, and you can check that out, we have our complete fee schedule there, including the retrofitting. So if you'd like to see how we do it, probably the best thing to do is go to carlsbadgolfcenter.com. And fitting uh, rates and brands we fit are all listed on one page. So you can see that very easily there. Um, but we do different types of fits, whether it's a hybrid wedge putter fit. You can do any of those separately. Um, and that could cost you as low as thirty dollars then we go all the way up to our ultimate fitting package which is all the clubs it takes up to three hours and that runs 270 if you uh, don't buy anything and if you do buy 
uh, then it's $180. And that covers our fitting time, fitters time. And I really want to make sure we can afford to have really great fitters, so it's important for us that we have to charge for the fittings. And some people don't do that. There's different varying opinions on that and philosophies. But for us, we just we have got to cover that cost. We just can't do it without it. All right, moving into our uh, our demo days and our uh, custom fitting experience, we have a lot of time to call it. Uh, we have over 25 vendors out there and over 400 people a day. And our spring demo day, we have uh, two day at the end of April. So we end up having, I'd say, pretty close to 1,200 people out there in two days um, for those events. And uh, one of the big keys for this event is we plan a year out, so we get it on the calendar, so we make sure we have all the reps uh, committed early and uh, make sure that we get the uh, <clears throat> um, all the everything set up, who's coming, the uh, contracts. One of the things we make sure they do is that we get donations for prizes because we give over $3,000 in prize drawing uh, away every um, demo day. So that really gets people excited about coming out and, and signing up and giving us their information um, because that really helps our marketing effort, efforts that day and in the future uh, to make sure we have continual contact with our customers. So we have over 13,000 uh, people in our database and uh, we keep that, we use that all the time. Probably two or three times a month we we'll send out things relating to the golf center. So uh, a demo day is a big part of our marketing effort. So we don't look at it just as a one day or two day event. We really look at it as all day, all year uh, event that helps us with our marketing efforts and gets people interested in custom fitting. A lot of people come back after this event and get fit. Uh, it's, it's pretty chaotic that day, so if they want to go through a whole fit and get all their clubs done, that, a lot of times we get them out there for the first time through the demo day and then they come back and see us for a fitting. Uh, club repair. Well, this has been a really interesting part of our business. Um, the most growth I've seen anywhere has been in our club repair and uh, I think one of the things is just being a full service and a lot of times we do the uh, repairs while people wait or go hit balls so um, I think we're just uh, very fortunate to uh, have a good reputation there and get the work done quickly. Um, the, we also did this grip wall, you can see a picture, you can't quite see the whole thing but we did this uh, wrap of a wall in our shop and we got all the grips up there. We have over $20,000 just in our grip inventory. Uh, we carry a ton of grips, and then they're on the wall there, so people can walk in, we can size them. Uh, it's really easy for them to see what everything we carry. So I'd say just doing that grip wall, we probably raised this last year over 20% in our revenue from that wall. Um, and Dee Dee Lasker uh, from Global uh, Tour Golf helped us with that and, and Golf Pride. Um, so been very successful there. And then we have the uh, we do all the retrofitting, and then we do our own repairs and adjustments. You can see the guys doing that there in the lower uh, pictures. And then uh, our our range um, really have been important to me. If we're going to be a, a, a driving range, we want to be the best one we could possibly be. And uh, you know, having brand new balls all the time going in through our custom fitting. So everybody who gets custom fits pretty much hitting brand new balls. Um, and then we remove old ones every day. And we have uh, upwards of 60,000 balls in rotation uh, at all times. And uh, the, uh, we have three ball machines going there. Uh, we replace worn out mats all the time. So we, you know, we never have a torn mat. Um, and then uh, uh, we just try to maintain a really fresh look. We have a nice putting green, real gr grass, and uh, that really helps us to bring people into practice. Uh, I wish we had a little more space for a practice area, but we do have a bunker in the green. Uh, we do have a grass tee line for the custom fitting and for our, um, our golf academy. And for the, uh, most of the instructors could teach off the grass if they need to. Susan, uh, re regarding the uh, practice green and the, the bunker that you have, I think that's relatively new, meaning in the last five years. Is that true? Uh, no, it's always been there. A lot of people just didn't know about it. We decided we better promote it a little bit more so they realize we have it. The bunker's tucked kind of over on the south corner. Um, and then the putting green everybody uses all the time. And it's a little bit on the small side. It's about 3,200 square feet. So um, uh, it gets a lot of use, but it stays in pretty good shape. So we're very fortunate there. It's been uh, very important to our business to have that. Is it, would you say it's a key factor in driving wedge and putter sales? Definitely, yeah, We can because we can go out there. We can do some of the fitting on our, um, our putting. We do have some putting uh, 
systems, but mostly we'd go out on the real green and, uh, and take the putters out and putt, and, and that makes a huge difference. We can do long putts, short putts. Uh, so the range card program that we have is a range servant program, and it is a loyalty program, so the more they put on the card, the more we add value. So if you buy a $100 card, we give, uh, they buy, give us $100, we put $120 on the card, and uh, uh, this has been just a huge success for us. It immediately raised our revenues by 20% when we went to this program uh, several years ago, and uh, a great way for us just to uh, keep our customers coming back. We have a lot of people that we have a... $300 car, we give them $400, and that's our largest, but uh, they can start with a card as low as $20, and we give them $22, so most everybody comes in, we um, talk to them about getting a range card, and also then we have their information and uh, can communicate with them, because we'll have uh, happy hour specials, things like that, that the range card holders get, um, so they're able to get extra discounts as well. So Susan, I'm assuming that when they buy a range card, you collect their email address at that time? Oh, yes all their information, yeah, and it goes directly right into our system. Easily captured. Um, and then the, the, uh, if you check out on the right side, a couple of our team absolutely love to decorate for the holidays. So uh, we've, uh, we can only do so much inside the building and out, but uh, we've started doing the outside of the range and you can see the hearts on there. That's the current picture of our range up through Valentine's Day. We'll have the heart up by the golf sign and the uh, we have hearts all over the place, actually, down below, too. So uh, the, the uh, Halloween one was one of my favorites. You can just see, and everybody loved it. They hit a lot of balls at those targets, uh, had a lot of fun with that. We get a lot of comments. And then the golf shop, uh, we carry, for most of the year, we're about a, we have about a half million dollar inventory in the building. Uh, we also have a warehouse where we... Uh, can stock a lot more product. We do a lot of online as well our dot, through our dot com, eBay, and Amazon businesses. Uh, we do take trade ins, so we most of the trade ins will go through our, our eBay uh, business. Uh, but uh, everything in the shop is usually current product uh, in the shop. And uh, all the staff are in charge of uh, making sure everything looks good. Uh, you can see that is what I call our art wall. Those are our uh, irons up there. Obviously, we don't we fit every almost 99% of all irons. So that wall there is a just for everybody to come in and look at the whole set after we fit them. A lot of times, I want to see what a wedge looks like or four iron. So the sets on the wall really help us to uh, show them what the the product looks like because we have to fit with either six or seven iron. Um, we carry a lot of junior products. You can see all the bags lined up there. Um, so we make sure we at all times we can pretty much fit any player. And most everything is custom ordered and special ordered, except for the woods. A lot of times we can adjust. Uh, we all have the right shaft, right head, and we can make adjustments in the shop. Uh, we do all the gripping a lot of times for ourselves in the shop, so we can quickly change out grips, put their favorite grip on there, and they can leave with the woods, hybrids, and the fairway woods. Same day. Irons, not so now, much. Now, Susan, I know you have uh, a seven or eight uh, individuals. I think that work inside. In terms of the uh, the online business and uh, the off property warehouse that you have, do you have one person that takes care of that, or you have multiple people that do that? Uh, Can you talk a little no, bit about? about uh, there's about ten people up there in that building as well. Um, so we know it's it's pretty large there too. We have a uh, uh, fourteen fifteen on property at at the golf center, and then. Uh, it depends on time of year, but up to 10 people working in the warehouse. Uh, we also have customer service, all the listers um, at the warehouse. Now, uh, what's the split on the revenue of, ver of online versus uh, what you're selling at the, at the Greencrest storefront there? You what know, you that's say? a great question. Um, you, you know, it was quite a, I, I call it the wild, wild west, right through the recession, we started the eBay business. and. It was just a, a, an unbelievable growth market for us. And then uh, things tightened down. Things changed a lot. Some people got in the business where it really drove the prices down. So we, uh, over the last couple of years, have pretty much tried to exit out of the eBay side of things unless it's our closeout and used products um, that we, we sell because it just, uh, it's a very difficult marketplace right now. Um, I would say when it was going crazy, we sold two times the product online. And now I'd say we're back to about even online to in shop. So it's drastically changed since uh, 08, 09, 
and all the way up to 2014 was really great. And then I'd say we probably backed off the most 2014, 2015. 2016 really leveled out. And uh, I think just a lot of consolidation in the marketplace has uh, kind of normalized things a bit for us. But I think there's still huge opportunity in the, on, the, on the club side of things. I just don't think there's enough opportunities for people to, to buy product there and, and really be fit for it. So we've seen a pretty good size growth this last year again in, in club fitting and sales. Um, one of the great things about our team is they love to come up with neat things. That's our current uh, display for Valentine's Day. We had last year's uh, uh, master's display there. And then Les, our manager there, we try to do all kinds of fun things around him. He's just he's great at uh, doing fun things to laugh and have a good time. So we dressed him up as Monty Hall and uh, you know, Les make a deal. His name's Les and Les Pato Prize is there. So we do all kinds of fun things around the holidays with him and uh, and the staff. And since everybody knows him, he's been there for 12 years. It's really a fun deal and uh, people get a big kick out of that. But we're always trying to come up with new and fun things and uh, different events and uh, um, contest to keep people interested in coming out to hit balls. It's a, it's a fun group. And uh, the, over the uh, holiday we had a great contest where if uh, the team hit their sales goal then the management team came in and uh, they ran the shop while the, the whole golf staff went to play golf and we took care of everything. And Of course they, they hit their goal and uh, had a great time out there. You're going to see some pictures of them out there in the rain playing golf here in a minute. Um, instruction, I won't get too much into that because everybody probably talks a lot about that, but uh, we do have both staff instructors and independent instructors at our facility. Um, the, uh, one of the big things we did this last year is we uh, partnered with Devin Bonebreak. He came from Jim McLean Schools and he started Southern California Golf Academy. That's been uh, very successful and he's going into his second year uh, really working hard to help uh, young people, really accomplished young people. Uh, in the game and he travel, actually has kids from all over the world coming in to uh, work with him. So that's been a, a great thing for us and uh, I'm very excited to see where that goes. So all the time just striving to do things a little different and uh, bring in new people. We have uh, eight instructors right now there, so some independent and some staff. And big thing for us, if I'm not having fun, I'm not doing it. So. Every day I just walk in there and I see smiling faces and happy and you know just having a good time with them and uh, you know it's been a great ride. Uh, I I am uh, very fortunate to have a wonderful team that uh, manages all this and uh, I'm uh, I'm just uh, thankful to be a part of it and that I had this opportunity to live my dream out with this little golf course or little golf center. Um, here's a few pictures of my team and Jacob's. Uh, unfortunately, we lost Jacob to. Uh, he had another company last year. He's in that lower left, but he was an incredible young man and part of our team. But uh, here's the team here in the upper second one over from the right. That's the team after they went out to play their uh, their match together. That the management team came in and uh, covered the shop for them. And they're just a great group. They're really close, and uh, I just love seeing these pictures again because it makes me happy to see that they're having fun as well as getting to go to work every day and enjoying what they do. So we're so fortunate to be in golf and. Uh, you know, it's been my dream come true, and I just, uh, if I can help and share in any way to help any of you, if you have any ideas and want to start your own business, I'm always here for you to, to bounce ideas, and, uh, you know, it's, it's every day you got to be remembering that, you know, these people are counting on you to, to uh, have a vision and, and stay solid as a company and be able to uh, make sure that they can come to work every day and get paid, and so, you know, I, I do take it very seriously, but, uh, it's also a, a heck of a fun ride, and uh, I'm looking forward to m uh, many more years doing this. And uh, I guess that's uh, that's a wrap on my end. But if you guys have any questions, uh, let me know, and I'd love to go over a few things. Well, thank you very much, Susan. Um, truly, uh, you know, personally, an inspiration to me. I think so many of us out there at our various properties, you know, we, we work so hard doing what we do, and the 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 idea or the dream of what it would be like to actually own the places that we work at, um, we would truly be a dream come true, and, and you're, a, you're a living example of that and a tremendous inspiration. Uh, I do have a few questions that have, that have come in. The, uh, you, you touched briefly on your, uh, your, your range ball uh, system. You said you have three machines 
um, that service them. I'm assuming there's one at the golf shop, and because I, I think you're only one level, right? Carlsbad Golf Center is only one tier. There's only one right. level of uh, of, uh, of a hitting deck. Yeah, we have 58 uh, stalls. We have two ball machines that the balls are blown into on the up by the golf shop on the north end, and then we have one ball machine down the south end, near the, uh, right next to the maintenance building down there. And when you say they're blown in there, can you talk a little bit of, can you explain that whole process uh, of, uh, of that automated system um, sure. from, a, from a logistics standpoint and how the balls are gathered, loaded, and how the whole system works? Because um, that, uh, for a lot of us uh, uh, range operators, that's a huge, huge area, challenge area, a lot of opportunity in that area, and I think you've got your system pretty well wired. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, you know, one of the big changes we made the last couple of years was we pick once a day now. If we, if it gets too busy, we have to go pick twice. But really, to keep the wear and tear down on the equipment, you know, we have a rather steep hill out there in the in the um, top of the range. So we really try to pick once only or twice a day, and then uh, the balls are uh, washed, and then they go directly into a blower system that blows the balls into the machine. So we don't touch the ball once after we pick it and dump it into the machine, the, the washing machine, then it doesn't, isn't touched again. So very efficient. Um, they go through the balls there at the station and pick out the bad ones, of course, but uh, otherwise it's uh, very simple and uh, we spend most of our time making the facility look good and not picking balls because uh, when I took it over, that was one of my uh, pet peeves. I just saw people driving around a lot in the, and I didn't see them picking up many balls and I was like, why are we doing that? So we. Uh, we switched that up uh, a few years ago. Uh, we try to stick to it too, unless we're short on balls. Sometimes during the wet weather, we we have to go out there and do some extra picking. We get lose a few. We do have a creek going through the property, which is one of our biggest uh, menaces. Um, but uh, that floods, so we do have some challenges there. But uh, most of the year, we don't have to worry about that. So we're very fortunate that once or twice a day does the trick. And uh, Susan, this question just came in. Uh, the, what would you say to a facility that is and whose people are kind of stagnant and stuck in the same old ways? Can you talk a little bit about commitment to excellence, enthusiasm, selling, etc.? cetera? Um, this uh, individual has asked a few more questions, but let, let's start with that one. What would you say to the facility that is and whose people are kind of stagnant and stuck in the same old ways? Right. Uh, well, that's a that's a tough one, and you know I'm always gonna uh, I always look to leadership. Um, so if if I hear that and if I see that, I, I'm gonna take it to my level of uh, we've got to fix this. So first we start with the management team, uh, do a bit of a retreat or a, a getaway. Um, we've got to reinvigorate and get the management team excited about what's going on. Um, I, I don't necessarily find that uh, direct compensation is the answer. I think it has to be more team-driven when they come together as a team like we did. Uh, our numbers were enormous over the holidays, honestly, because of this team having this fun contest. They didn't want to let each other down. They didn't want to not show up for work because they, they knew they needed to keep their side of the bargain and, and make sure their numbers were good as well. So it was a fun deal to watch. And, you know, you can just see in the pictures I still have on the screen. I mean, they truly care about one another, and you know, always smiling, always having fun. You know, Les is a uh, down in the right uh, hand lower corner. He's a retired uh, Marine Lieutenant Colonel, and uh, amazing human being. And the way he leads the team uh, as a Marine, I've got several other Marines uh, on the team as well. But he uh, he leads the team with such strength and. Uh, passion and compassion. Uh, he just loves them dearly and, and they know it, but he's also a tough love too. And uh, you know, when you're training people and making them uh, better at what they do, sometimes that's not always easy. But the way he goes about it, making people feel good about it, even though he's maybe kicking their butt, um, he's just truly gifted that way. So I'm going to just say, as a leader of this team, I have to make sure that my management team shows up every day with that kind of enthusiasm and passion or we will get stagnant. So it starts with me. It goes then to less, and you know if I see a management, and I've and I've had it over the years, you know where you can get tired out, and then, you know we do make changes, and those are the hardest decisions I ever have to make, or when somebody I care about um, is just uh, getting tired and uh, or needs to, we need to make a change. So I'd say you have to look at the changes you need to make, um, but also reinvigorate the team, give them the tools 
that they need to succeed. A lot of times they all have the answers. Um, if you listen to them, get them in a room, they have the answers and uh, that's typically where I start is listening and then, and then implementing from there. And who does the majority of the training uh, for, for new coworkers? Uh, that would be Monica, my head professional, and, uh, and Les um, would primarily be the two. Uh, Lori Ash and uh, Matt are also my next uh, middle management team there that daily uh, help them, especially at the registers, making sure that uh, they understand and, and know how to use the registers. That's a big one. But uh, it's been interesting to see, uh, uh, you know, when we first uh, made some management changes, Les really had a new team in place when he came on as manager a few years ago. And, uh, and then he's built his team to have a couple more people to uh, help him out. But um, it's interesting. They really do help each other as a team. So it's fun to watch them. I think that speaks volumes to the, the team building uh, fun, synergistic, if you will, hate to use that term, uh, environment that you have where uh, a variety of people can train. It's not just one person at the top of the pyramid driving it down. It's uh, everybody's really at the top and, and, and involved in this thing to where numerous people can, can be involved in the training uh, uh, practices. I think that speaks volumes to the, to the teamwork. Um, the same person asked another question here. It says, how many times did you, uh, how, many, how, how often do you uh, email blast your 13,000 contacts? How often is, uh, are you contacting with them via, via email marketing? Uh, that is about twice a month. We're really careful. That, that list goes to um, just our best customers at the range there. So we have them divided up. We have an online database too that has tens and tens of thousands that go out to the online. But uh, the, the actual CGC uh, facility newsletter goes out to 13,000 usually twice a month. Uh, but we are very careful never to overdo it there. I think we're just inundated across the board with too much uh, electronic mail. So we're very careful. We want to make sure it's timely and interesting and that we have tips and things that will be of interest to our, uh, our customers. But we're very careful not to overdo it. And uh, do you have one individual that's in charge of uh, your social media and Facebook and likes and, and such? We do. Um, she's in the middle picture there, Christina, uh, on the right of uh, of Lori there with the microphone, that's Christina, and she is our marketing manager. She does uh, all the newsletters with our vice president of technology, uh, works with him directly, and then does all the social media, Twitter, um, Facebook, every, everything. So, and always uh, having some fun new things. You know, we, we try to stick to really fun things out there on social media, not too uh, product driven there. Susan, um, can you uh, share an idea or two on how to build uh, your instruction business or your club fitting business? Sure. Um, well, the, on the club fitting side, um, having a, working with a couple great reps uh, that will support you. <clears throat> we can't do that without our reps. It's just it's a it's a big business, and we need them. Uh, closely involved. You know, I would start out with just two or three brands and then grow it from there. It is difficult to, to run a facility with 10 brands. Um, it's a big expense. You know, there's over $50,000 just in equipment in there. Um, but if you start out with just two or three brands that you really get, can get behind and believe in and the reps support you with the, the fitting systems, um, that's how I would get it started. Uh, I, again, I don't I recommend stocking too much. You know, a few drivers, definitely fairways. Um, most everything else, uh, wedges, putters, you probably need, but you can pretty much custom order everything. You know, seven to ten days is what we promise, and most people are willing to wait once they've gone through the process. They're, they're, not, uh, they're not held back by seven to ten days to wait for some product. So um, we don't do uh, demos anymore. We'll, we only will go out and help people. Um, we just believe it's the right way to do things. Uh, most of the time, even though they think they know what they need, uh, it's we can make some slight tweaks or improve on it. So uh, typically, we can go out there even for 10 or 15 minutes and get them into a full fitting. But uh, um, developing a fitting business, I still believe, is one of the biggest things we can do as professionals to uh, to help our facility and help our members. 
and uh, customers. So uh, I think there's huge upward potential there. And Susan, uh, obviously you're, you, the, the, the accolades and the success and the, uh, the storybook uh, career that you've had since taking over Carlsbad uh, uh, Golf Center in 2003 um, is truly an inspiration again. To, to, I can't say that enough, but what, what, what was going on in your career prior to 2003? <laughs> oh geez. Uh, well, uh, I had been uh, in Denver. Uh, I was a University of Wyoming grad and played on the g golf team there. Actually, started a program and then went to Denver. And uh, somebody told me I just needed to join the PGA, and so I said okay. So I went to Denver and I did that, and I got a job. And uh, I was assistant golf professional at a country club for several years. And then I went and uh, decided that I wanted. To, I loved club fitting. I, I went out and got educated on club fitting with Henry Griffiths and, and Pat Lang, one of my mentors, uh, Lang Golf. She taught me so much um, about fitting and I was having huge successes and helping my club so much and my students so much that I said I, I just have to do more. So I became vice president of Lang Golf in Denver and then in uh, 1998 moved out to um, work with Cobra and, <coughs> excuse me, Cobra and Titleist on their um, uh, equipment size, and I was a product manager for Titleist and Cobra for several years. Um, but then from there, um, went to Golf Digest, Golf and Win Magazine, and did, was West Coast equipment manager, and did all the marketing and uh, uh, incentive-based programs for the magazine. Um, and then the Golf Center came up, and you know, I just, I, I, I think I'm uh, one part crazy, and um, I guess I uh, decided that you know I was going to do this, and uh, I was going to figure out a way, and. So I met with accountants and everyone, and looking at the numbers when I when I, I was still at a fantastic job, and I was like, "What am I thinking? I'm going to jump ship on this." And I love the people I worked with, and um, but I knew that I always wanted to have my own business, and I knew this was going to be the right thing. So even against my accountant's wishes, he just shoved the paperwork back. And he said, "I hope to hell you know what you're doing, and good luck." And said, "Well, okay, I hope I know what I'm doing too." And uh, so that's how that all started, and. You know, there's always naysayers. There's always people who not, don't believe in you, and you just got to believe in yourself and and figure out a way to get it done and show up every day and do what you say you're going to do. And um, that's how I <laughs> I made the crazy move to to buy this wonderful little gem of a golf center. So uh, quite a story. I did a lot of different things. Uh, nothing has made me happier though than this golf center. I'll tell you that. And Susan, when it when it came to uh, making the decision making the decision to take it over. Was there? A, did you do a mark, a competitive market analysis, and and looked at other driving ranges in the area, and and uh, uh, traffic patterns and location, and all of that, or was it just so you were so passionate about wanting it that you didn't really care uh, 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 about the, uh, what a market analysis would produce for you? You just wanted it. You knew you could make it a success, and you took it over. Was it? Was it? Was it more passion or or scientific? Um, well, no, my background's a business degree in finance and uh, marketing and uh, business management. So, I, you know, as, as much as I am passionate, I'm also uh, pretty calculated, I guess would be the word. So, no, uh, I went out and counted how many other off-course um, golf shops there were, which was 53, by the way, which, again, makes me wonder. I, you know, that was one of the hardest because there were so many other golf shops that really concerned me. But I had known this, this golf shop had done very well, so... I thought I could continue that. And my background in merchandising and things I had done in the past, I, I was pretty confident on that. Um, I knew that there were only a couple other driving ranges around, and there were uh, really very few other clubs in the area at that time. It's actually gotten more competitive over the years on the club side. There was uh, to the range side. And uh, so the range was actually very, very uh, lucrative and, and not many around. So that was the, the thing that sealed the deal, is that there weren't very many ranges around. I knew I could do the golf shop and the, the custom fitting, but, uh, um, or I, I thought I could, but that was a little more of a, a treacherous uh, road. But the range business was just this unbelievable cash cow. So I, uh, I, that's what made me push me over the edge to decide to do this. But now there's almost no other golf uh, shops, which is why I think there's a huge opportunity there. They've almost all, they're almost all gone. I feel almost like a sole survivor up there in North County, San Diego. Which I'm sure compounds uh, the the business um, to the uh, to the positive. How uh, are there any remaining staff members that were there in 2003 still on your team? 
Uh, there aren't. Uh, one of the last ones retired last year, um, and uh, Les has been there. He's been there 12 and a half of the 14 years, so Les would be our our longest standing one. And boy, he's just amazing. And I'm I'm hoping I can keep him from retiring for another four or five years. We'll see. <laughs> as long as he's having fun, I think he's going to keep coming back. Now, is the the staff uh, are they commissioned in any way, or is it are are they straight hourly, or can you talk a little bit about um, your compensation structure there um, from from top to bottom? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, we do uh, bonuses every year, um, so most of the funds would come from an overall team aspect. However, uh, the custom fitters uh, we do have. Uh, products and in the shop too uh, we set up different spiffs so all the team can uh, extra work on certain products can earn additional income so uh, there we uh, we try to all live on a, a you know a decent wage there but we also uh, incentivize them as well so we do both and usually the equipment companies and the other companies help us a little bit with that but we also do a lot of our own um, additional um, commissions in, inside the shop that we do out of our Revenue. And I think I have one more here. Where do you see the CGC Carlsbad Golf Center? Um, where do you see it going in the three, five, and ten year uh, plan? Wow, good, good question. Um, well, I think we've all seen the drastic changes in golf business. Um, you know, I think uh, the millennials, the younger golfers, are looking for a little different product. So we are continually looking, and we'll be launching some interesting new technology in the next uh, year uh, that will help bring more of the game atmosphere, um, some of the apps, uh, things like that, that we can start to use uh, with our launch monitor technology. So we're gonna, you're gonna see pretty drastic changes there I think in the industry over the next few years so I'd say that's where where it's going um, I don't think the range as it is just hitting balls will be where it's at I think we're gonna have to put some sort of a gaming aspect uh, to it uh, similar to a top golf but not to that level that that's way too expensive for a market like ours but uh, and we don't have the land for it so we're gonna come up with a, a different uh, type of product that we can uh, implement on our site so Stay tuned on that. Um, the other thing I will mention is uh, I didn't. You probably not maybe noticed uh, food and beverage. We don't really have a food and beverage operation. We have some drinks and snacks, uh, but I b believe that I'm going to have to figure something with that, uh, especially with maybe beer and wine in the future. So if you ask me, my three to five year plan, it's going to be more in the range of uh, food and beverage operation and uh, in implementing some sort of a gaming opportunity at our facility. Uh, but that's in the works right now. But don't tell anybody. <laughs> I've got, uh, uh, I don't have any more questions that have come through from today's participants. Hold on, I got another call here that's, that's disturbing my phone line. Um, your patience here for just a moment. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that concludes this morning's Catalyst webinar presented uh, by Susan Roll of the Carlsbad Golf Center. Um, truly a, a, an inspiration and a great presentation. I want to thank you for your time and your efforts in delivering this to the section this morning, Susan. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, and, John. And uh, wanted to remind everybody of our next Catalyst webinar, which is on uh, February 23rd where Ken Mengel, a movement specialist for For Fitness Golf, will be presenting uh, as our Catalyst presenter for that day. Once again, please join us on February 23rd, uh, same time, 8 to 9, where Ken Mengel of For Fitness Golf, movement specialist, is going to be presenting to us. And uh, again, thank you, Susan, for your time today. Uh, participants, thank you very much for joining us. I will be sending out the Catalyst quiz. Uh, it's a 10-question quiz that will be going out to all the registered attendees this morning.
please take the quiz and return it to, uh, to Sharon Kerfman at PGAHQ.com. A score of 70% on the quiz will earn one MSR credit for attending today's Catalyst. Uh, I'll also be including the YouTube link uh, if you want to go back and reference the, uh, anything in the, this morning's Catalyst, you'll be able to do that through the uh, section's um, YouTube uh, page as well. Uh, thank you, everyone. Susan, thank you very much, and uh, everyone have a great day.